Well, it looks like Flight 11 has a slight delay, given the uh, notices moving back a little bit, but that's not slowing SpaceX down. Here, after the successful static fire that you saw in the last video, we're going to do a Starbase summary and talk about the things we've seen in the last couple of days. Remember, if you're new here, these Starbase summaries are done a couple times a week, like two or three times a week, and we talk about the things that we see going on at Starbase, like this, Pad 2 coming to life with multiple different tests here. We see a lot of uh, venting happening from the Pad 2 tank farm, and then a deluge test there at Pad 2. Actually, Pad 2 coming to life out at Starbase. Remember... Oh, that was a little time lapse there. We sped it up. Remember, this Pad 2 is a different design from Pad 1. It's not the flat shower head at the bottom that just uh, sprays upwards. It's actually a ramp and flame de deflector design, sort of more in line with what you see at the uh, the launch pads that have done lots of launches out at the Cape, Falcon 9 flying from. That sort of stuff has that sort of ramp design. So moving over to Massey's, we see more testing happening on that test tank, just pushing and pulling on it. And then all the way back to pad one, they're removing that ship static fire adapter. So like we said, after that successful static fire, that uh, the ship was attached to that adapter, allowing them to connect a ship to the OLM, which is booster shape. They need to remove that static fire adapter, get it out of the way. They'll remove all that scaffolding. They'll remove those temporary hoses from the back part of the booster di quick disconnect there in the upper left-hand corner and get those out of the way for launch. Now here, Booster 15-2 moving to the Rocket Garden. We saw this last time as well, where the booster sort of gets out of the way. They're done with it, and they park it, and they have it ready to go out to the launch pad, but they don't need to sit it at the launch pad right now. Still work being done in preparation for that, so they're just going to put it over here in the parking space. Of course, it's Dash 2 because it is in its second flight campaign. Which 15 already did one flight, and then it got the Dash 2 when they started preparing for the second flight. Big boat of contention always down in the comments. Uh, should it get the Dash 2 before it actually flies the second flight? But that is talking about it preparing for that second flight. Here they are removing those temporary lines for the ship propellant loading from the back of pad 1 there. And then we're going to get a wide shot with the reflecting pool here in the foreground of the launch side. It's pad 2 on the left, pad 1 on the right. There's a little bit of a zoom in on pad 2. Still tons of work happening. They got all the scaffolding out of the way of the deluge test down there, but the sides and the top still very much under construction. How, f how soon will it be before we see a booster over on here? They're certainly making progress, but they still have a little ways to go. Maybe before the end of the year? I guess there's one way to find out. Remember, you can watch what we're doing 24-7 over on Starbase Live. It's right here on the same channel. And we keep it going 24-7, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so y'all can keep up with Starbase. We do the Cape and we do McGregor as well. So, up on the top of the pad, you can see there's two booster di quick disconnects up there. Wow, say that 10 times fast. Uh, you really only see one here because the other one's sort of in the background but two different consumables also on the anti-tower word. Tower word? The, the side of the pad away from the tower is where they put those quick disconnects. So apparently we've, we've taken some footage of a seagull here enjoying the water. Oh, and uh, oh wow, I, I actually can't name that one. It's one of the uh, like crane, sandhill crane. That's not tall enough to be a sandhill crane. It looks like more of a piper sort of thing. That is definitely not a sandhill crane. Help me out down in the chat. One day we'll do a video where we walk around with a RGV uh, wildlife expert who names all this stuff for us. Looking over at the tank farm. Was that ice that just fell off the dock? I feel like I just saw ice. Scroll back real quick there. It looked like there's some maybe the wind blew the ice and the ice sort of flaked off the top of that. Here's some of those pumps. The big gray parts on the top are the pumps. Then you see the emergency valves. The big red areas are valve systems and stuff. But it takes a lot of pumping capacity to move around those propellants. Now here on the lower sort of left-hand side is the mega bunker, the massive reinforced concrete bunker that they've been working at. Here's why it's called the mega bunker. You can see how big it is. Of course, they put some little SpaceX-y lines and stuff like that in there. That actually looks like it's going to be a balcony. Like, you can get lunch there or something facing away from the launch pad. 
which is interesting, but uh, massive concrete structure. Way better than some of the, let's say, sheet metal sort of tapped into places that we've seen. Uh, the temporary, the field expedient, the get it going now structures that sort of were the original things around the launch area. They would take some damage. They'd have sheets of steel blown off of them almost every single launch. And uh, here, a more permanent structure to support the launch operations for the future, I guess. I'm curious how this is going to look when they're done. Like, the, the, it, it, it has the angles. It has the SpaceX angles, right? Like, Pad 2 has the angles. This has the angles. It's got, like, the Cybertruck sort of angles. They're doing a concrete saw there. Huh. Nice detail shot. Going to go down the road a little bit. So from this perspective, that place we were just looking at, the Mega Bunker, is on the right-hand side of this shot. It's like up the road to the right a little bit. But here we're going to zoom in on that ship quick disconnect adapter. It's, it's sort of the slow disconnect adapter here. It does not disconnect from the ship. It's just so that they can attach the propellant lines to the ship where the ship is not normally supposed to be. We talked about it in the previous videos, but probably the last time we ever expect to see a ship on the Pad 1 launch pad like that. It just doesn't need to be tested like that in the future. Looking back from the launch site, this is actually on the walkway, it looks like, towards the production site. We've got a bunch of <laughs> concrete mixers, cement mixers, going into the foundation work area for the Gigabay, that left-hand turn where they're turning in. They moved that gate a little bit down, and they moved some of those fences around, sort of preparing for that giga work. Giga work? I guess you could call it that. Gigabay foundation work. There's 15-2 on the left. You can tell because it looks a little smoky on the top, right? Booster 17 was on the right there. Then we're going to go back up the road towards Massey's again. We've been seeing an awful lot of testing on 18.3. You see, which, 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 which tank is it? Which tank is being tested right now? There's some obvious visual indications on the screen. It's not the tank in the can crusher. It's the tank that has the frost on the outside right now. Some roadside rocket science going on. You can tell that's got cryogenic propellants, or you can tell it's got something cold in it because the atmosphere, the humidity in the atmosphere is literally freezing to the outside of the tank there over at Massey's. I'm going to see a peek at Booster 12 in Mega Bay 1 there. Office buildings in the foreground with those floor-to-ceiling curtain windows, I guess. Got the grid fin at a jaunty angle. And then we're going to look into the factory itself. We've seen Ship 39's nose cone here in this position for quite some time. Lots of tiles. If you sort of look through the scaffolding there, you can see the tiles being added. Going down the row, here's Ship 40's nose cone that has a bunch of scaffolding around it. This looks like the same thing from a different angle, I believe. And you see another cone there in the background, not labeled. Ah, yes. Oh no, we're in trouble. Uh-oh, the comments are never going to let this let us live this down. It says that it's a concrete pour. You don't pour concrete, you place concrete. It's not a liquid... What? No, they're just putting the concrete in place. Every time, if you say they're pouring the concrete, somebody in the comments is like, you don't pour concrete, you place concrete. That's okay. Here, look. There's this big boom thing, and it's just... Just like putting concrete <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> to fill in the parts of the foundation. Wow, look at those massive bolts sticking out as well. That's cool. They were protected. They had a wrapper on the outside of them. I'm going to roll back towards the launch site again for a nighttime view of Pad 1. That looks like some welding work to me. We're going away. I always like identifying the welding versus the grinding or cutting versus uh, based on how the sparks look. But you all know how it is. Remember, if you want the full analysis, we do a scripted full analysis every Monday. It's called Starbase Update here on the same channel. And that's where we actually sit down and we document all the facts that have been going on. And uh, we script through it and we talk through things in a very intentional manner to try and densify the information. These videos are more of a reacts to footage video. I'm not trying to in-depth analyze anything. In fact, I'm not even allowed to pause it or edit the video. I just talk about it as it's going. But there you saw the slow disconnect being removed from pad one. There's that static fire adapter 
rolling back earlier in the video, you saw that come out of the launch mount with that crane. And then here, that's actually a super wide angle camera. We call that one Skycam. Uh, you can tell because it's, it's like the road is not bent like that. Here's another, here's another normal camera <laughs> that does not have the huge fisheye effect there that the Skycam has. But that's going to roll back. I, I don't think they need that anymore. It used to be a transport stand, and they converted it into that, right? What? It, okay, they look like... Spa no, go back. They look like SpaceX logos in green in the upper right-hand corner, but I think they were just a lens artifact from the very bright lights in the lower left-hand side. I paused because I'm like, are they projecting? Oh, gosh, it's crab time. Are they projecting a SpaceX logo into the sky? But that is not it. It just so happened to work out that way because of the uh, the very bright lights opposite in the other side of the lens. Apparently, we've got another crab friend here walking along. But that's going to do it for this Starbase Summer. I appreciate you all hanging out with us, and we will see you nerds later.